I'm Mixer Jai and going to be upgrading the Justice League versus the Monster vs. Defender iPhones and Media. It would be good them having the Creature Commandos, the Sentinels of Magic, and the Justice League Dark as one of the main characters with the Justice League and Teen Titans fighting against the Universal Monsters is and the Monster Bears. Because the Creature Commandos already have something to do with the Universal Monsters since some of their members are based on the Universal Monsters and are created from the Universal Monsters. The Justice League Dark and the Sentinels of Magic are the most iconic horror and magic ex teams in the DC Universe. And also the Justice League and Teen Titans are the main characters of the DC Universe. So it's good them fighting against these guys specifically and it would also be good to get the full feeling of DC versus is the horror icons. You can just make it that the Halloween spirit is the one who, who summoned all these guys to fight against the Justice League. And that's right there being a different Frankenstein and the brighter Frankenstein with the Creature Commandos. Are you just making it, it that the Creature Commandos brighter Frankenstein and, and Frankenstein were just created from the original Frankenstein from the Universal Monsters? And them just finding the Halloween spirit with it, the monster vs monsters and the universal monsters. And I'll leave a link in the description below to explain the rest of the stuff and the characters that would be in it. So you've been caught up on it and so you also knowing what I'm talking about in this video. And for why they never fight each other before, I'd just say hey, the universal monsters were already dead by a monster hunter. But then they came back to life or it was just them being trapped in Transylvania at the time. With them away having access to the monster based monsters or them just using the Halloween spirit to summon them from another dimension. Deadman is a ghost of a circus performer who was killed by a member of the League of Assassins Hawk. Batman helped him solve his murder. And Deadman decided to stay on Earth to help people. The reason why he ended up as a ghost and other people didn't was because of him being summoned by the goddess Ramakusna. Him being loyal to her because she gave him a second chance. John Constantine is a good person. Him just needing to do terrible things for the greater good. His conscience may suffer, but at least him getting the job done. Him just needing more power, so him not needing to do the terrible things in the first place. He does care about the people in his life. And it shows how much of a good person he is that he still cares about them even after they hate him. Satana is one of the most powerful sorcerers in the DC Universe. They're using backwards spells. She uses stage magician tricks for real magic. And she also makes her audience think it just being stage magic by her using real magic in there. And Etrigan and the Demon are friends with Batman. Etrigan is a demon who is cursed to be with a knight who betrayed Camelot. And Strong Thing has even been known to give Batman a beating on occasion. Think about that next time you break up the Reed Racker. Then, about five years ago, Karma caught up with him. It was a weekend show. Full house. He died, and that should have been that. But with Boston, things tend to get complicated. His spirit was called by the goddess Ramakrishna. She took pity on him and gave him the power to possess the living so he could bring his killer and others to justice. Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! How can you hope to defeat a god? Not only can I sense you, you cannot defeat my shield. Since when does god need a- No! I said we go and talk to a man about a horse. Did you hit your head or something? You're babbling! A Trojan horse, Boston. Boston! Trick the tree! tree. <laughs> Brother.
another night. Let's take Grundy. I hope those elephants survived. You don't want Peta on your back. You were assuming they were real in the first place. How are you, Bruce? I'm fine, Zatanna. Did you mean it? I'm choking here, Johnny! Did you mean it? Yes! I... I don't understand! It's the Kamdeva curse, Nergal. That's love you feel. Renee and Trish's love for Chaz. And it's all inside the girl. All inside you. And to a creature like you, that's a cancer. Stop this, John. Stop it. And I swear to you, I'll give her back to you. We've already got her back, you twit. No, not Trish. Astra. The binding pact seared into my own flesh. I'll take you to her. Set her free. After all these years. Bugger off. This is redemption enough! Sacrifice. Yeah, well... Nergal's a steaming pile of demon shite, so that's not what- Renee won't have any memory of you now. There's always a price to pay. You had this in your pocket the whole time, didn't you? I did. But I hoped I wouldn't have to use it. You miserable s- The proper response is thank- I had to throw in us. Wasn't enough. So I had to throw in some extra juice to put the spell over the top. But the memory of those two kids who grew up together in the pool. Uh, sorry. Your name is... Constantine. John Constantine. Yeah? Well, it's a name I hope I never hear again. You take good care of him. I will. Tempting offer. But no thanks. I'm getting homesick. And if I'm gonna knock boots with the city, I'd rather it was London, love. Best of luck, Chaz. You're gonna need it. Oi! Oi! Slow down, mate. Bloody hell. One of you actually made it out alive. Wasn't easy, I'll tell you that. Oh, never is, mate. So you're gonna take me back in? Eventually. But right now, I could use a little company. Such swift mercy is not for the likes of thee. Set of wheels. Money, 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 money. You call upon my powers, impish rhymer. Life to the lifeless, I ask you to bring. This vehicle here is just the thing. Say no more. Money, money, money. Why do you disturb me, impish rhymer? From this place where we have fought, transport us now to the land of Scott! Very well. Now bother me no more! Together we are a team of thunder. Have you an opening for a new boy wonder? For five hundred years, he and I have been bound. A demon from hell, a knight of renown. Though we were cursed to be slaves to each other, I know of no man I'd want more for a brother. Farewell, mortal. You couldn't have picked a better place. The village where he was born was over there. Too bad it took this to get him home. Actually, it's Swamp Thing. But you know how it is with nicknames. Someone just called me that and it stuck. Okay, you're safe. <laughs> Humanity. I do not miss it. 
Not tonight. Swamp Man helped Grundy destroy humans. Grundy shared power with Swamp Man. Appearances aside, I'm more of a sunshining life affirming creature. I'll pass. Then Grundy bury Swamp Man. <laughs> Night's over, Solomon. Yeah. I'll get you. I could have turned him into a bunny. I wouldn't exactly call a saint. But more human, maybe, than you'd care to admit? Maybe. It's a favorite hidey hole of one Alec Holland whose corpse was taken to be the most recent avatar of the green. Bet you won't find that on your bloody cell phone. Our date is more factual. Alec Holland was murdered by terrorists. His body was never recovered. End of story. Not quite. Swamp Thing! I know you're seeing this. Get out here or the posies get it! Dude, your social skills are horrendous. You have a garden. Yes, I find it relaxing, and I water it every week. If we don't get a handle on this rotter, he'll threaten all of humanity. What of it? No longer. Perhaps his actions are a kind of justice, for who destroys more of the green than your kind? Jim Corrigan should become the Spectre and Batman Kid Crusader to redeem himself. And the Scarecrow is the most well-known supervillain that uses horror weight in his gimmick, so you should make him one of the main villains because of him being one of DC Comics' main horror villains. With him doing a plan to help the monsters. Him trying to steal money from a rich family. With the Joker and Harley Quinn. And him blowing up the underground power air system in Gotham City. And him also raiding Star Labs so there would also be enough of the Joker toxin, fear gas, and the venom drug to affect all of Gotham City combined. And him also using it to free German Ghost, Salmon Grundy, and the Man Bat family to attack the city. This is from the plot lines from DC Superhero Girls an episode, but it is also a good plot line and it would be good for an anime movie. Hey, especially if you changing it up a bit by doing hey, the fake plans the Joker did too. And you'd also change it up with the Joker being one of the main villains of this is anime movie too and him being the main villain of this plan, him just working together with the Scarecrow. It would make more sense for the Scarecrow because of the horror theme and it being perfect for Halloween. But the Joker would be the main run, but it would be an equal partnership. And the Joker would have how they quit and try to blow up Gotham City. So it would be Gotham City's scariest Halloween and their last Halloween ever. And so no one could ever outdo him. And because of him promising it being Gotham City's scariest Halloween of all time. And that it, horror events would be perfect because of them being monster villains too. For the movie. I like it. Very imaginative. But your ring's useless against me, Lantern. Then why are you running from it? All right, I took you lightly. I won't make that mistake again. I think you might. <laughs> so Boo. I'm the man who haunts you, Gentleman Ghost. I don't frighten easily, Batman. Revenge is a fire that keeps me warm in the eternal cold of the grave. I'm not done with you yet! You hound me even in death. Careful, Speedy, it's booby trapped. 
Quick, let's get it open. Jeepers. Is Batman... He's alive. That's some meditation technique. So cast your broken bodies into the Thames. Oh yeah? You and what army? Never ask that question, Speedy. <clears throat> Nth metal arrowheads. I never traveled to Europe without them. The artifacts! I beg you! Your army isn't as loyal as you thought, Craddock. Curse you, Batman! Curse you! The gentleman ghost! <laughs> Superheroes these days? What a pair of plum chaperones you make! I'm not sure how many more sick burns from the 19th century I can take. So long, you ninny hammers! Whoa, this year's. Learn <laughs> something new every day, don't you, Mr. Craddock? <laughs> Meh. Had more riding on it, yo. Yes, I see now. Your name was Cyrus Gold. An evil man who performed many evil deeds. Until the day you aroused an evil as great as your own. And dumped your remains in a swamp redolent with mystical properties of its own. These magics did not sit well together. And so it was. The swamp gave birth to a walking dead man. Soulless and empty. Always seeking, never knowing why. Several of the laborers who lost their homes were versed in magic from their native countries. On All Hallows' Eve, during a lunar eclipse, they used that magic to form Solomon Grundy from the very waste of Gotham Swamp. Since the laborers and their families lost everything they owned... Couldn't lose a 500-pound zombie that easily. What makes you so certain, sir? You're kidding, right? Just because an arch-villain masqueraded as Grundy tonight does not mean... That... It's Grundy! Run! Born on a Monday, christened on Tuesday, married on Wednesday. This place. <laughs> what have you done? You nailed You can't kill him! You can't! Could find out the Joker is just using it and then she would go against the Joker and stop him blowing it up. And you also doing her origin story from Harleen, either as a flashback or a brief mention to flesh her out more and for it having more meaning for when she goes against the Joker in the animated movie from DJ's Black Label. <laughs>
kids have fun. Jordan, I have delivered your scariest Halloween of all time. My number one gal. Your number one gal? Well, <laughs> Batgirl and I will handle the clowns while we take care of the monsters. Well, that takes care of the monsters. Not all of them. This is just phase one. <laughs> I, I cannot. Boo? Don't worry, Stretch. It's temporary. I want you to see phase two. All I gotta do to ensure this remains Gotham's scariest Halloween of all time is make it Gotham's last Halloween ever. You're gonna destroy Gotham? Of course not. You are. <laughs> Barbara, I'm so sorry, but you heard dead. She must have secretly flipped the override, which prevented the pumpkin from touching its base and kept the obliterator from, well, obliterating! There's hope for Harleen yet. <laughs> it would be nice you having one more cadaver and can you a stick in the air with the spook, the savage skull, who goes after cats and used to be friends with Harvey Bullock, and the gold coin killer, because his storyline was the first appearance of Lucius Fox, and it would be nice to playing him with the Penny Plunderer and Sterling Silversmith and Victor Zaz, because of him being similar to those guys, and it being with all Shreve and Trocris and Scarfaces, not just all in Rusker, but also Wiley the Trocris and Simon Belcher and the equally creepy doll 30. Since they'll never be as good as the actual Ventrokers, you should just put them with the Ventrokers so we can see more of them together with each other. And the rat catcher, because it being good, his theme being rats, and also Calendar Girl would go great with Calendar Man because of this being a Halloween story and them being with holidays specifically. And it would be good you making it the high peak Maxi Zeus's wife and his daughter as supervillains with Maxi Zeus. And the Death Man, the better version of the Ten Eye Man, and Dr. Radion. Because him actually being one of the first good characters in comic books. And it would also be good using the signal man with his signal themed gadgets and him also having light powers. And it is actually good him being inspired by the bat signal. And the Monica Menace was his first supervillain who fight against Batman. So you should just do his kid being a supervillain with him if you want to put this story in Batman Kid Crusader. And since you having so many iconic monsters in there, it would also be good you having other iconic guys in there like Sherlock Holmes and Jack the Ripper. And it would be good you proving that Batman is the world's greatest detective because of Sherlock Holmes being one of his heroes and him helping Sherlock Holmes solve his unsolved case. And Batman being a better detective than Sherlock Holmes. Ha! You'll find my reflexes are as sharp as my mind and my blade even- Everyone knows who you are. You're the world's greatest detective. Indeed. And you making it similar to the steampunk world, with you combining Batman's version of Jack the Ripper and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hive, and Batman the Doom that came to Gotham, as a combination of all of DC's steampunk storylines, you would use them to flash out how the monsters got trapped in Transylvania and why they're back now with the movie starring in steampunk London, these guys just being the Justice League's in the modern day's ancestors and some of them mortal superheroes who have been alive at the time. With you also throwing in parts from all that is steampunk worlds like the bomb cell world and the recent steampunk world storyline. And all the other things from steampunk world and also all the other things from steampunk Justice League. And you also throwing in Batman Holy Terror in there to show how good the modern day Batman is. If you also doing the Catwoman Guardian of Gotham storyline as Catwoman's ancestor in this storyline. And you could even do the Justice becoming the monsters and the Teen Titans needing to defeat them. And with there also being sources during the steampunk era of DC. I saw your work on your wife. Wives? They're the worst prostitutes of all. Sell themselves too cheap. Wives, mothers, that slut none of yours. Look, Bruce, the world of tomorrow is burning, exposing the ashes of degradation hiding beneath. This is where we belong! No. I paid Houdini $300 for that trick. 
Fight's over. Time to go. There's fire, and there you'll always be, sir. Do these belong to you, Alfred? <laughs> Good Lord, no, sir. They belong to you. Gone. All gone. And the hope of Gotham with it. It was all phony anyway. We'll make something new. Something better. You don't have to do this. You can leave. We can leave. Get a new ship and go anywhere else. Most people, if they see a house on fire, will run and call for help once they're out of harm's way. While others, very few others, would run right into that house and try to save those who are trapped inside. I am Batman. Must I do my damage here? must seek out every eternity in this hell you remain! Bruce Wayne must die, and through death, become himself. He burned to the ground. But thanks to Bruce, I've come to think of Gotham as home. In many ways, my first home. Bruce Wayne had a vision of what Gotham could be. An ideal. I promised to do everything within my power, and beyond my power, to bring about the realization of Bruce Wayne's dream for a new Gotham City. Those of you who knew and loved him, take comfort in this final thought. But you could always be sure of it. He would do anything for those that he loved, and he was stubborn as- I know Bruce is watching over us, and something tells me that if we, the people in city that he held so dear, ever needed him, really needed him, not even death itself could keep him away. And you could also do the storylines from um, Batman Long Halloween, like not just Batman Long Halloween, but also Batman and Dark Victory, and Batman the Misfits, and also Batman Halloween Tales, and you're only doing it in a quick glimpse, and for us being in the modern day, and for the origin story of the modern day superheroes, to quickly get us caught up on it, and for us knowing and these versions of the main superheroes. Either you doing a full story of it, or you just doing a quick glimpse of it. Then you would do the DC Night Terror storyline, and you doing it true to the comic book version of it, and it just being a plan by the Universal Monsters, and the Monsterverse Monsters. And when I say the Universal Monsters, I mean the original most iconic monsters from the movies that introduced them and made them iconic. Like Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When I say the monsterverse monsters, I mean the giant monsters as from the live action movies like Godzilla and King Kong. Kaizus, whose movie giant monsters, they are different but they are similar. Uh, them being from different movies but they are the most well known monsters. They would be good for this, for what uh, icons for the Justice League to fight against. And it would be good bringing these guys together, especially to fight against the Justice League. In DC Night Terrors is a storyline of where a supervillain, a new supervillain, puts everyone in the world out to sleep and gets them stuck in their nightmares of their worst fears, so him looking for the Nightmare Stone. Something he would use to bring in their nightmares to life, and you could uh, do this the same too, 
You know, just Dr. Destiny being the main villain and Insomnia just helping him. Um, and Dr. Destiny doing it to get revenge on the Justice League and to defeat the Justice League. And you also making it that Insomnia has better reasons to hate the Justice League. And the same thing happening to him at the end of the storyline, but Dr. Destiny also convincing him to do it, and Dr. Destiny obviously being the main villain. This would be the monster's plan to get rid of the superheroes so they can take over the world, with Dr. Destiny just working together with them. And this is how the Justice League would find out about the Universal Monsters and the Monsterverse Monsters is doing this. It also bring together supernatural heroes and the main heroes as for this event too. It can also make Doctor hate a lot of chaos. And with them just fighting against them after the nightmare thing. Because of Amanda Waller getting in the superheroes way is how this happened in the first place. Because if she didn't the superheroes would have already gotten rid of it. So Amanda Waller finding out how... How um, much her need the superheroes in the end, and her deciding to work together with the superheroes, and her also finding out that she was the supervillain all this time. This would give the plotline more meaning, and so it having an effect, and it being obvious for continuity reasons, them doing it for the rest of the DC universe, if this having an effect on the comic books. Plus, this would also be a good reason to be a good big part of DC history because of it doing such a big thing that really should have happened by now. Now, I mean, Amanda has done a lot of terrible things to superheroes and almost ended the world multiple times because of it. So it is good to finally learn her lesson and, and just admitting that she does need the superheroes. And the Justice League could just became the same kind of monsters they defeated while fighting against the Universal Monsters, as or them becoming it to defeat the Universal Monsters. It would be a most, you know, and have metaphorical meaning with the Teen Titans needing to take their mentor's place and needing to fight against them in order to save the world. It would be different from the other times it happening because of them not being mind controlled or turning evil, it being because of them turning into literal monsters. It's not just the teenage superheroes becoming the main superheroes, it's also them needing to do something so horrible to their loved ones. And them also proving that the student has become the master, and also them needing to do something impressive by defeating the Justice League themselves. The point of view of the story of the anime and movie would be told out through four members of both the Teen Titans and the Justice League, and it being their main members, and you also using them and to introduce us to the idea of superheroes in the anime and movie, with the Teen Titans being new to them and the Justice League already being experienced meeting them. Some of the superheroes like Supergirl and Mars and Manhunter would go to hell uh, to stop them from freeing Doomsday from hell and also to stop Doomsday from breaking out of hell uh, themselves. And this would also be how they fight against the many devils of the DC universe, the Charity, and the many physical embodiments of death at the Charity in the DC universe. And you would do Bloodwind being his own superhero and him being the Superman of Hell, but him also going into the real world on occasion to help out the user superheroes, particularly he to help the Super Family and the Morrison Family fight against super villains and. And specifically, supervillains that are similar to Doomsday, supervillains in general, their own specific supervillains, and supernatural supervillains. And this would just be where the other superheroes were while them fighting against the main monsters and villains. And, and this could either be one four hour movie or it being a whole series of movies. To take four variants of the crossover and to do a good job crossing over with it. And to do the full story of it, to do the story justice, and to do uh, the crossover justice, and to do uh, the ultimate version of the crossover. You could even make it uh, there being a series of these movies, it's each one of them having four parts to it, and each one being four hours long. If you doing the story of them fighting in track that, if the Suman's part of him fighting in track that, it being him going to Transylvania. Him fighting against Dracula to show him knowing Dracula and that Dracula has been a part of the DC universe for a while. And Dracula shows up in the modern day who would fight against Supergirl and Batgirl by using some of his monstrous magic with him being some movie versions of the universe. So, and on monstrous monsters to fight against the Super family in the Bat family, particularly Batgirl and Supergirl, to go against and try to defeat the DC superheroes and to take over the DC universe. 
Then Superman would be back in Transylvania for something for the day planet when he would find out Dracula is alive again. Dracula would try to mind control Lois Lane and try to turn Superman into a vampire, but he couldn't turn Superman into a vampire. And this would also be how Superman would get the creature commandos that was the Justice League Dark and the center of magic on, in on this. And because of Superman finding out about this, him getting the Justice League and Teen Titans in on it, it, so him going back to the main part of the DC universe, then they're going back to Transylvania to fight against the Idea Monsters. And Batman is the most iconic guy who has fought against Dracula, uh, since it's one of the most iconic horror Batman stories, and one of the most, most iconic Dracula superhero crossovers is ever was Batman the Red Rain Trilogy. If a Batman fights against Dracula, gets turned into a vampire, and then him needing to kill himself because of him turning into a vampire. They did do a good job telling an accurate version of the storyline combined with the first time Batman and met up with the Mad Monk and in the Batman M8 did movie the Batman vs. Dracula and the Batman cartoon show, and in the Batman the Brave and the Bold episode Shadow of the Bat. But it would be good you putting it in an anime movie, like you doing it as a flashback or just as a brief mention in this anime movie. With Batman fighting against Dracula specifically, eh, because of him being similar to Dracula, and in the fight he could have gotten his blood sucked by Dracula and him becoming the new Dracula. It would be good us actually seeing the DC superheroes fight against a Dracula Batman instead of him just being already dead or them just going with someone else who isn't even as good. Which one first? Something hot and spicy, I think. And then, a delicious, cool dessert. I wonder if your blood is green as well. The curse has now consumed them all. The Justice League this night must fall. Batman told me the way to help him was by changing our orbit. If this vampire war is to be won, all hope resides within the sun. <laughs> You don't understand, do you? I was just letting them have their fun. They're like children. But I am the master. Jason brought you here after Dalla's bite poisoned you. A new feeling, Batman. Truth be told, I'm famished. Dracula would have been staked and killed by Van Helsing years ago. But the evil sorceress and monster villains of the DC Universe would have done a ritual to bring him and the other universal monsters back to life and free them from Transylvania. It would make sense for the sorcerers and mind siblings because of them and specifically would think how powerful and awesome the universal monsters and the mind siblings monsters would be. Because of them knowing how dangerous they are in the supernatural world and because of them knowing and how awesome they are to IJ monsters. The IJ and mortal supervillains would know how dangerous they are but now them being desperate so them doing anything to defeat the superheroes at this point because of it being so long even for them to defeat the superheroes. And the usual those supervillains would just think them being able to handle them if them trying to betray them or go against them and they would know them being able to do the job and knowing about them in general from their movies about them. Thus, Marvel does have their own version of Dracula, so it would be good DC having their own version of Dracula. He does have a history with the IJ and DC heroes like Batman and Superman, so it would be good integrating him into this place, and he would have some rivalries with them here. And it would be good DC having one of the most iconic monsters under their ring too. And Dracula... Uh, would be eager in the DC Universe since they only have Frankenstein's monster himself in the DC Universe. Them actually having more than one actually. 
Then, not just that, but it could also be a vent for the Just League Dark specifically. And he could already have history with the mind state and uh, uh, supernatural sorceress of the DC Universe. Thus, we have already seen Batman vs. Dracula, uh, but we haven't seen the Just League fight against the other Universal Monsters, and it being with the whole Just League against each one of the Universal Monsters. This way, you including the whole DC Universe, and it being one for each opposite number. And the Justice League have a way to cross over with the Monsterverse, specifically Godzilla and King Kong, so it shows that they can do this because the Universal Monsters are in the public domain, and one of us does already own, own King Kong, and they do have copyright use of Godzilla. Plus, Toro would love up to do an anime and movie with Godzilla. They're the company that actually owns Godzilla, but they do have copyright to that at one of us used Godzilla. Uh, and also, if they did a crossover with the Justice League, that would bring even more people into the Godzilla fandom. The Monsterverse Monsters are just to freshen it up and to make it even more original than fighting against the Universal Monsters, and for the Universal Monsters to have more of a chance of winning against them, for there being a big enough threat against the Justice League. You can also have them cross over and interact with the people who are already similar to them in the DC Universe, like the usual monster villains there. To do them mingling with the DC Universe there, and it is reasonable since there are already being lots of monsters and supernatural villains in the DC Universe. They can work together with the uh, Ghost of Van Helsing or the Ridge of Van Helsing and one of his descendants. And you can even make it that Van Helsing was such in the modern day and he was one of Batman's mentors. I mean, for the Santa crossover with the DC Universe, they made Santa one of Batman's mentors, so this actually it makes sense by comparison. And so, oh, it putting them directly against the Universal Monsters, and so them being a big threat at against Dracula. To explain why there would be more than one Frankenstein in the DC Universe, just say they made the Creature Commandos Frankenstein by using DNA from the actual Frankenstein, which is partially how the supervillains were able to bring back the original monsters. With the Vampire from the Creature Commandos also specifically fighting against Dracula because of them using DNA from Dracula to turn and the Vampire from the Creature Commandos into a Vampire. And Superman would specifically get the justly caught up with the supernatural villains like Dracula along with the other sorcerer, the heroes of the DC Universe, and the Creature Commandos. And because of the magic and monster heroes, and all of them seeing these things in movies, they would know how to defeat them. Easily. Vampires, Vicky? Just bats. I just as they could fight against other villains similar to them and be infected by them in the end, then their partners would defeat them in the end and become the new Justice League. Soon we get Frankenstein's mindset because they're both are kind and good hearted. Wonder when we get the Wolfman because it's the only one left from the big trio and they're both wild. The Flash would become a skeleton and Green Lantern would become a ghost. To have the Iron Monsters there, and because these match them specifically. And other DC villains that are similar to the Universal Monsters metaphorically would also have, have interactions with them. Both Solomon, and Gwenny and Bizarre are based on Frankenstein's monsters, so them hang out with him. Um, and the Kryptonian Werewolf uh, would hang out with the Wolfman because they're both werewolves, but the Kryptonian Werewolf has human superpowers. 
Aquaman would become the creature from the Black Lagoon because Aquaman is a Lantean and the creature from the Black Lagoon is a sea monster. Marson ran into it fight the Marsons from Mars Attack because them being the most iconic alien movie and it being good them going against stereotypes. And Green Arrow would work together with the original Robin Hood for things to come full circle and because of them already having iconic guys like him. Harvey Dent would interact with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hive because Two-Face's whole thing is being similar to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hive. You would do the Batman storyline called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hive for Two-Face's origin story in this movie with his brother being Palm Dent, no face. With him, Charlatan and Charade working together with Two-Face in the storyline and to really cast in and, and the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hive meeting, they're coming full circle for the two faces of the DC Universe. He sees the Phantom, the German Ghost, and any other ghost thing villains in the DC Universe would cross over with the Phantom of the Opera. And they would also be the Man of Wax working together with Clayface for the Vincent Price Ice Base character in the movie. And you can even have Vincent Price as one of the narrators of the movie, with the RJ narrator being the original narrator of the original Creature Commandos comic box. You also doing monsters similar to them. Like Vlad and Pear is Dracula's father, and Nosferatu is Dracula's brother. And with them summoning a Cthulhu and, and Cthulhu for both the original Lovecraftian monsters and DC's own version of Lovecraftian monsters. With these monsters already knowing about it because of them using their own magic and because of them being around for so long that they know these guys casually. And you know it being big when you have all that kind of monsters. Then them also infecting other people and turning them into each one of the original universes kind of monsters. And with some superiors being able to resist it and using it against them. Then for how you would use the monster vs monsters, you would do the storyline exactly the same from the Justice League vs Godzilla and King Kong. But with them being summoned in by the universal monsters specifically to fight against the Justice League and to go with their other monster army and to make sure they win. The universal monsters would also know these guys casually because them being the most iconic monsters and because of the universal monsters being around for so long. Then they would also get help from the other sorcerers of the DC universe to summon them and to control them to go against the Justice League. The monster vs. monsters like Godzilla and King Kong would already want to go against the superheroes else because of them already being mindless and because superheroes not being the usual part in their dimension. And some of them wouldn't want to fight the Justice League, them just fighting them by coincidence because of them fighting against the other giant monsters and because of the other supervillains getting them to fight the Justice League. Because of them just being in the city at the time and the Justice League trying to stop them from destroying the city, them just wanting to destroy the Justice League all natural. You would also do Superman actually being in the whole storyline, him not just being taken out for most of the storyline, and it being them being able to put more of a fight against Godzilla and then being more evenly matched with Godzilla. You also having Godzilla and King Kong work together with each other and fight against each other. Uh, in general more, uh, whether it's against the Justice League or with the Justice League against the uh, Universal Monsters. So, these giant monsters are a big threat, but the superiors are competent at their jobs. And so, assuming trying to marry those things, you take advantage of them already being married in this universe, with there also being John Kent and Damon Wayne. And if you do a movie just as for a Godzilla vs. Kong, or do another version of this anime movie, you're doing it exactly the same in the comic book version of it. And for this version of the anime movie, you're just making it that after they defeat the Universal Monsters and become the new monsters, them taking control of the giant monsters, and after the Teen Titans defeating the Justice League, and again using the sorcerers to get at these giant monsters back where they were, and then becoming the new superiors of the DC Universe. With all of the most iconic giant monsters is from the movies like the Blob and all the monsters from the Monsterverse is from Godzilla and King Kong. And even the giant woman and some dinosaurs. And some of them from the new original giant monster movies. To blend in and out with the Universal Monsters and the Monsterverse Monsters more. And to take advantage of this crossover since something like this might never happen again. And also some of DC's versions of these guys. And them also having everything extra from all their movies that gave them things in it.
And them also fighting against some DC shit monsters like Catmo and Titano. I'm, I don't need an army of gorillas to crush humanity. Just one huge chip that I control. That's not Stargirl. Hi, Agrazi. Long time no see. And you are... Holly Quinn. You know, Holly Quinn, Batman's arch enemy, America's screwball sweetheart. Yes, well, I'm not forming any criminal alliances today, so... We apes need to stick together, right? Uh-oh. Did they say a giant monkey was smashing through the city? No, they said a giant ape was smashing through the city. Titanio is the King Kong and Superman source guy, and him actually being better for the giant fight against Superman because of him having kryptonite vision. And Camel is DC's own personal giant monster, and DC's most iconic giant monster, and him being a big tub of chemicals, as with acid spit. It would be good to show that DC has giant monsters too, not just Marvel, and it would be good to show how good their giant monsters are by going up against the original, most iconic giant monsters too. There will also be some crossover and interactions into the MonsterVerse part of the DC crossover too. You're also doing something big and revolutionary with that part of the crossover too. Alice is Batwoman's sister and Batwoman is the cousin of Batman. She also usually fights against Nocturna who is a vampire. So Nocturna and the Mad Monk could have became vampires because of Dracula in this anime and movie or them just having the usual origin story and then working together with Dracula because of him being the main vampire. It would be good the monster villains of DC Universe that they already have getting in on the monster apocalypse and the infection apocalypse of turning into monsters in DC. Anton's dead. What? You killed him. No. You're lying. I know you didn't mean to. I didn't kill him. I couldn't. <laughs> oh, God. Anton. <laughs> Thank you for your help yesterday. Ah, uh, all I did was get beat up by the bearded lady. <laughs> what is good because of a woman with match. Dr. Death would have his original gas mask look with his original disfigured look because he is Batman's first supervillain and he would work together with the Mad Monk. And Vicky Vale would be a good replacement for Julie Madison and if you ever retell the Mad Monk storyline. With you doing something similar to the Batman vs. Dracula anime movie, hey, but it being with, with him going up against the Mad Monk and it being a retelling hey, of the third version of him first meeting the Mad Monk. If you also combine all their past history together there, and you also making it that the Mad Monk is Batman's own personal Dracula. Because him not being a cheap knock of a Dracula, him being a supervillain version of Dracula. With the Mad Monk being a vampire because of a curse, his sister Jala also being a vampire and here being one of his most trusted agents in his cult. And him fighting against Batman for years and then it actually being a history between them with her also having a romance with Jason because she tried to seduce him and turn him into a vampire to get to Batman for the Mad Monk. We cannot hope to stop Dala.
Trust you'll start work on a cure for her. Before the rising of the sun, this reign of blood will be undone. An eye vampire is an underrated member of the Just League Dark, so it would be good him being able to get in on this with his girlfriend Mary, and you can also have Bloody Mary in this as for a vampire working for Apocalypse, for even him being on this because even he acknowledges the threat of Dracula, with it being the same as his seats with the Monster Just League. An ill at Cassandra Kane and Stephanie Brown how an Antigris specifically we get a lot to do in this anime and movie because of them being lesser known of their superior families. So it would be good them being able to get something out of this anime and movie. And Kerry Kelly is Batman's Robin in the alternate universe and one of the most iconic Batman storylines, Batman the Dark Knight Night Rises. They should put in the DC universe because he's so iconic and because of her being better than Damian Wayne. Damien Wayne would become the White Owl, and Kerry Kelly would become the White Talon, and Scarlet would be White Hood's Robin sidekick, and the New Orleans would be the main Robin. That's all, folks.